Ladies and gentlemen, I am Mass Sergeant David Berryman, and I'll be your narrator for today's ceremony. On behalf of the Commander, 60th Air Mobility Wing, Colonel Jeffrey Nelson, and the men and women of the 60th Maintenance Group, welcome to today's official change of command ceremony, in which the reins of responsibility and leadership will pass from Colonel David Hammersmith to Colonel James Reeves. Please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the playing of the national anthem. We also invite you to remain standing for the invocation provided by Chaplain Lordy. Good morning. It is good to be together. Let us pray as we are willing. Dear God, gracious and loving creator, we invoke your presence and blessings upon this moment in the life of our group and our wing when the mantle of leadership is passed from Colonel David Hammerschmidt to Colonel James Reeves. For our outgoing group commander, Colonel Hammerschmidt, we offer our gratitude for his leadership and dedication, not only for the accomplishments to which he has led this group, but for how he has treated the people assigned to him. We have admired both the humility and grit of a leader we have wanted to follow, and Colonel Hammerschmidt has fostered a culture of care alongside a dedication to mission that will long be felt on this flight line. We ask for continued blessings as he shifts his attention to family and the next chapter in their lives. And we give special thanks to David's wife, Kim, for there is no greater support to a great leader than a great partner in life. And to Austin, also gratitude for his support along the journey. For our incoming group commander, Colonel Reeves, we anticipate the highest dedication to our mission, its people, and the callings of his personal faith and conscience. We welcome him and the new vision he brings. Dear God, grant him your wisdom as he navigates this transition and grant us the compassion to be open to new ideas. May we all together create an environment in which the challenges are fair and the work rewarding. To the end, we better serve humanity, this great country, and the ideals of freedom for which we train and fight. We welcome also his wife, wife Catherine and children Maggie, Owen, and Bryn to our 60th MXG family and pray they find fulfillment among us as well. May we all be blessed with a willingness to lead when called and to follow when needed. We are grateful for so much. May we continue to be faithful in that joy. May we say amen. Please take your seats. Thank you, Chaplain Lordy, for those inspiring words. As you will notice, today's ceremony will be uniquely executed as it is vital that we continue to fight the COVID-19 virus by maintaining social distancing. This situation has and will continue to present us with challenges that we will overcome. The change of command ceremony is rooted in our military history, dating back to the 18th century. 
At that time, organizational flags were developed with color arrangements and symbols unique to each particular unit. The flag served as a rallying point and a reminder of their allegiance to their leader during battle. To this flag and its military members dedicated their loyalty and trust. When a change of command took place, the flag was passed to the individual assuming command in the presence of the entire unit. All unit members could witness their new leader assume the responsibility and trust associated with the position of commander. He or she who possessed the flag also held the unit member's allegiance. This symbolic tradition has survived throughout our military history. Our goal today is to continue the change of command tradition while recognizing the constraints of these unprecedented times we are currently in. At this time, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce the official party. The presiding officer, Colonel Jeffrey Nelson, accompanied by his spouse, Courtney. The outgoing commander, Colonel David Hammersmith, accompanied by his spouse, Kim, son, Austin, and parents, Dave and Nancy Hammersmith. His brother, Kelly, accompanied by his spouse, Babbitt. His mother-in-law, Louise Devine, and his good friend, Colonel David Cooley, accompanied by his spouse, Sharon. The incoming commander, Colonel James Reeves, accompanied by his spouse, Catherine, and children, Maggie, Owen, and Bryn. We are also privileged to have with us today several distinguished guests. Air Force Civic Leader and Golden Bear, Ms. Sandy Person. AMC Civic Leader and Golden Bear, Mr. Mark Lillis. AMC Civic Leader and Golden Bear, Mr. Scott Farmer. Travis Community Consortium and Golden Bear, Colonel Lynn Augustine, United States Air Force, retired. AMC Civic Leader, Mr. Thomas Randall. The Commander, 349th Air Mobility Wing, Colonel Lee Merkel. Representing the Commander, 621st Contingency Response Wing, Colonel William Wade. The Vice Commander, 60th Air Mobility Wing, Colonel Zachary Duran, accompanied by his spouse, Kelly. The Command Chief, 60th Air Mobility Wing, Chief Master Sergeant Derek Crowder. The Command Chief, 349th Air Mobility Wing, Chief Master Sergeant Jimmy Burmeister. The Commander, 60th Operations Group, Colonel Greg Johnson, accompanied by his spouse, Patricia. Representing the Superintendent, 60th Operations Group, Chief Master Sergeant Toby Thompson. Representing the Commander, 60th Mission Support Group, Lieutenant Colonel Matthew Suri. The Superintendent, 60th Mission Support Group, Chief Master Sergeant Erica Schofield, accompanied by her spouse, Chief Master Sergeant Aaron Schofield. The Commander, 60th Medical Group, Colonel Gwen Foster, accompanied by her spouse, Robert. The Superintendent, 60th Medical Group, Chief Master Sergeant Chanel Malnar. The Honorary Commander, 60th Maintenance Group, Mr. Paul Adler. The Commander, 349th Maintenance Group, Colonel Aaron Cook. The Commander, 349th Operations Group, Lieutenant Colonel Scott Meyer. We would also like to extend a greeting to all members of the 60th Maintenance Group and members of Team Travis watching today's virtual ceremony. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the presiding officer, Colonel Nelson. Thank you. 
an exciting day for the 60th day ministry. It's my honor and pleasure to welcome you all today to this morning's change of command ceremony. Welcome. Welcome to our distinguished visitors, the Sandy Persons, Mr. Mark Willis, Mr. Scott Farmer, Colonel Chairman and Mayor of the Augustine, and we got them all right there. Mr. Thomas Randall, Mr. Adler, Honorary Commander of the Maintenance Group. Well, we did the Honorary Commander kind of change out in February, and then that night I had to get a public health emergency, not because of the Honorary Commanders, but uh, that, that has kind of limited the interaction, so I'm glad you're able to come out for this event uh, to this morning. Uh, to Colonel and Mrs. Foley, thank you for coming out today. Uh, all others, Commanders, Chiefs, First Sergeants, family members, especially my wife Courtney, and the men and women of the 60th Fitness Group, thank you for coming out and being with us today. Thank you, Chapter 14, for the wonderful blessing upon today's ceremony for these two young gentlemen that have come on stage with me today. Uh, it is an honor to be selected to lead the men and women of the 60th Fitness Group. And for the past three years, Colonel David Hammerschmidt has done so with strength, professionalism, and dignity. Today, he will pass the reins of the 60th Fitness Group to another exceptional leader, before I discuss these two leaders more in depth, I would like to take a moment to thank their families that got them to us. The family unit is a backbone of military service, whether that is through the parents who inspire us to strive for greater things, the spouses that keep the home fires burning while we are away, or the siblings and children who remind us why we serve. In the end, it is not only the military that remembers the great things we accomplished throughout our careers, but also the families that supported us through our endeavors matter the length of time we are moving Today's family, his wife Kim, who along with David will celebrate their 26th wedding anniversary next Thursday. His son Austin, his super proud parents Dan and Nancy, who are here today from Minnesota, his brother Kelly, and his wife Babette, who are also here today from Minnesota. His mother-in-law, Lois, coming to us all the way from New Jersey as well as extended family and friends. We cannot thank you enough for the love and support you've given to Abel in these past three years. You have stood by him for good times and in bad, and the 60th Maintenance Group is better because of the love and support you gave him. Thank you very much. <laughs> to Colonel Jay Reeves and his family, welcome to Travis. Kath, Maggie, Owen, and Brent, we are so excited to have you join the Team Travis family today. To Jay's parents, Stan and Karen, Kath's parents, Brian and Liz, and Jay's sister, Ophidi, thank you for sharing this exciting day with us virtually. We are thrilled to have Jay as the incoming 60th Maintenance Group Commander, and are ready for the Reeves to join the Team Travis family. We will give a fond farewell to an invaluable team member as we recognize the three years of leadership here at Travis. We will celebrate his successes and those of the 60th Maintenance Group. And we will pass the guide on to a new leader who is well prepared to create his own legacy in the 60th Maintenance Group. I would like to emphasize how much of an honor it is to be selected as a group commander. It is even more of an honor to be selected to command the largest maintenance group. The mission of the 60th MXG is to maintain the 18 C5s, 27 KC10s, and 13 C17s. Yes, 58 aircraft within the 60th Army Building. Without the maintainers, Travis will be unable to execute our rapid, to rapidly project American air power at any time. And in case you didn't know, the 60th MXG also has the largest air power in the West Coast. During his tenure as commander, Colonel Hammerschmidt and his team have been over 23 missions carrying over 140,000 tons of cargo and 81,000 passengers. As if that were not enough, the MXG squadrons were air mobility command level awards five times, including three that were nominated for the Secretary of Defense field level maintenance awards. Additionally, under Hammer's leadership, the MXG secured the 2017 and 2018 air mobility command limits to be called in the Delta Large Unit Weapon System. Unit that has met an objective that provides safe, serviceable, and available equipment for sustained use in peacetime and war time, and determined to have the best maintenance system maintenance record 
Women's System of English right here for the preceding week. That is quite a feat. Pam, hey, you have also managed, mentored, empowered, and led over 2,000 parents to innovate, lead, and become experts in their brand. The 60th MXG has the best maintainers in the United States, of course. And your understanding of what it means to be an airman, as well as an airman, is what has made this all possible. As we send Dan and Kim and Austin off to a well deserved retirement right in the second line, we know that he will always be a great Air Force ambassador, and we wish you all the best future endeavors, and hopefully spending more time together. Maybe not. <laughs> As we say farewell to one great leader, there is another great leader ready to step up and take the reins. Colonel Hammerschmidt could not be leaving the 60th maintenance group in more capable hands. Colonel Reeves is joining us from the Air Force Life Cycle Management Center at Wright Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio, where he spent the last year working as chief of the F-35 Fleet in that capacity, he is responsible for the sustainment of the 1,763 F-35As in the Air Force's program director and ensured that warfighter requirements were adequately sourced and optimized in the Department of Defense's largest acquisition program value of $141 million. His experience as a three-time squadron commander across multiple combatant commands, including the United States and the Pacific Command, European Command, and Central Command, speak volumes about this work. He is bringing a wealth of Air Force and Joint Operations experience to Travis. We are excited for him to begin building his own legacy here as he takes him into the 60th Marines. But Jay is far more than what he has accomplished in his Air Force career. He is first and foremost a husband and a cat and a father to three very active children. I still live in the neighborhood that I used to live in as I went to club my mom, so I know you guys are active out there. He's the son of He's the son to Stan, who served as a staff sergeant in the Air Force as a security policeman, and Karen, whose first teaching job was at the Marine Corps Air Station in the Elementary School in South Carolina. Stan Vicky, thank you for raising such a wonderful son. Service to the nation runs in Jay's family. Both of his grandfathers served during World War II. Jim Reed served in the Pacific Theater and later joined the Korean War, while David Reed served in the European. In fact, it was the stories from David when he served as a navigator in the 17 that initially sparked Jay's interest and eventually convinced him to go to the Air Force again. His family's positive influence is the reason the Air Force has been able to capitalize on this revolution. Jay, Kath, Maggie, Owen, and Britain, we are so pleased to have you join our Team Travis family and hope that you will find yet another home here. To the members of the 60th Maintenance Group, thank you again for your attendance today and watching us virtually as we celebrate your accomplishments and the steadfast leadership of Colonel Hammerschmidt and for joining me in welcoming Colonel Williams, who is preparing for his own leadership journey. Thank you for continuing to allow the 60th Airman Building Man to consistently and constantly prove their archery legal practice. I am delighted to pass the time to Colonel Reeves and I look forward to the continued excellence of the 60th Airman. Thank you, Colonel Nelson. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand. Colonel Nelson will now present Colonel Hammersmith with the Legion of Merit. Attention to orders. To all who shall see these presents, greeting. This is to certify that the President of the United States of America has authorized Act Congress 20th, 1942, has awarded the Legion of Merit to Colonel David A. Hammersmith by exceptionally meritorious conduct in the performance of outstanding service to the United States as Commander, 60th Maintenance Group, Travis Air Force Base, California, 20 June 2017 to 30 September 2020. In this critical assignment, Colonel Hammersmith's leadership, vision, and initiative was vital contributions to the effectiveness and success of the 60th Air Mobility Wing. During his 36-month tenure, he inspired more than 2,200 personnel assigned to the largest maintenance group in Air Mobility Command, operating three weapons three major weapon systems totaling 58 aircraft valued at over nine and a half billion dollars as well as the largest aerial port on the west coast. Colonel Hammersmith's superior maintenance management and exceptional mobility expertise drove the highest mission capable rates for Air Mobility Command 
for C-17 and KC-10 units. Leading the charge and sustaining rapid global mobility, his airmen generated over 23,000 missions, delivering more than 140,000 tons of cargo and transporting 81,000 passengers in support of global combatant commander requirements. Furthermore, Colonel Hammersmith's ceaseless aircraft maintenance innovation efforts resulted in his unit producing the Air Force's first flight-worthy, three-dimensionally printed aircraft parts manufactured at the field level, setting the enterprise path for the next generation of sustainment frameworks. His vision spearheaded the standardization of Air Mobility Command's Health of the Port Matrix, transforming the data into actionable information, increasing worldwide aerial port capability and logistical flexibility. Finally, Colonel Hammersmith's leadership resulted in the group winning numerous accolades and awards, including three Maintenance Effectiveness Awards, the Large Air Terminal of the Year Award, and recognition as Air Mobility Command's number one maintenance group by securing the Clements McMullen Dedalian Trophy for both 2017 and 2018. The singularly distinctive accomplishments of Colonel Hammersmith culminate a distinguished career in the service of his country and reflect great credit upon himself and the United States Air Force. Thank you, Colonel Nelson. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Colonel Hammersmith, all of us here thank you for your tireless dedication to the 60th Maintenance Group. Ladies and gentlemen, the 60th Maintenance Group Commander, Colonel Hammersmith. Give me a second to get my notes ready here. Yeah, it is. It's definitely a book, multiple different iterations, scribbles, drawings, so bear with me as I plow through it. There's a, there's a thousands and thousands of thoughts that go through your, through your head when you come to this, uh, this point in your career. But uh, first and foremost, I want to say thank you. Thank you, Colonel Nelson. Thank you, Courtney. Um, Colonel Jerron Kelly, Chief Crowder, and Tia. I know Tia's packing up the house right now. I don't know how you won that bet, but good on you, Chief. Um, Greg and Patricia, Vic, Delana, Kristen, Will, uh, Aaron and Corey, thank you for uh, honoring us with your presence today. Um, Mr. Thomas Randall, uh, Sandy, Scott, Mark, Mayor Augustine, thank you very much for taking time out of your schedules to honor us with your presence today. You are part of our community that makes this assignment at Travis Air Force Base so special. I've never been in a community that, I've never been in an assignment that has a community that wraps their arms around the base like you do. Paul, I wish we had more time to work with each other. Um, I think you are, you and Jay are gonna be a great team once we can figure out how to get together a little bit more. But um, um, uh, let's see, Navcana. Praying for you, Nav. I know Flora's going through surgery right now, and I know you wanted to be here, but uh, you've been awesome in our time as an honorary commander, so thank you. Um, let's see here. I'll start with Kim. Kim, you greet everyone with a smile. You care about people. You care about families. You want everyone to be happy. You're empathetic to the point where you take on more than you more than you can imagine. Um, but you always want to help people and you want to make them feel welcome. And you've done that through every single assignment we have. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate that. You're always someone who is in the moment. Well, I've got my eyes on what's around the next bend, what's at the top of the next summit, and what's over the next horizon line. You always pull me back into the moment. Thank you for that. Austin. I recognize that there's an enormous opportunity for public embarrassment here. <laughs> I'm not going to do that because I know you're 14 years old, so I'll just drop you a what's up, bud. Uh, I got to go to the front office now because it's been an amazing team. Uh, starting with Chief Morehouse, Chief Haskell, and Chief Clark. You've provided direct and honest input with the best of intentions of our mission and people. Balanced in conversation, and you've kept the Chiefs Mafia tight and keeping the Officer Mafia on the right track throughout the whole time to keep that balance uh, poised with what we need to do to get our job done. Miss Sue, 
decades of experience out here. Miss Sue, my lady. We have a little tradition every morning when she brings me her calendars. She greets me with calendars and a curtsy. Your calendars, sir. I'm like, thank you, my lady. Miss Sue, you are the glue. You are the glue to the MHP. You keep the calendars and the taskers and the timeliness on track. You've served not only me, but nine other group commanders in this position. You are irreplaceable with decades of experience and knowledge. You have a 100% understanding of what is needed and how to exactly get there. That comes with the, the, the experience that you get over these years. If you are going to be missed, but I wish you could show the best in your retirement. James, my LT, man, you are a renaissance man. Not only can you do it all, but he does it all with such a calm demeanor and an easy laugh with results that are always amazing, that always amaze and impress, impress me. You have a bright future, and I wish you the best going forward. Eglin's not bad place to be a son. If you got to follow Travis, that's not bad. Dale. Yelling at you, not yelling to you. <laughs> Dale, I don't think I've met anybody that ever has a bigger part for our airmen and mission than you. Than you do. You care for the people in your mission. You balance it like no one else. Thank you. You are a true patriot, and you are an example of once achieved, always achieved. Thank you, Dale. Clinton. You are the Swiss Army Knife Officer. You are sharp, purposeful, and deliberate. But somehow you managed to grab the, the, the Swiss Army Knife that had the uh, confetti popper and the boom box attachment. Because you're always ready for a party at parties. You've served as the team leader perfectly between the group and the squadron commanders, and I could not have asked for a better deputy. You are all amazing. And you all made it such a pleasure and such a joy to work for each and every day. Let's see. So, getting into the 60s. Well, we started this journey about three years ago. Okay, this is We started this journey about three years ago. In our first week, we supported two squadron changing commands. In our second week, we went through an inspection, a headquarters air mobility command inspection team, going through every nook and cranny of our processes. By the third week, we were starting to get inclinations that the C-5 fleet was going to be grounding, and Dover had already put jets on the ground for it. We took out, we absorbed the workload from Dover and the C-5s that were flying throughout the system, and then in week four, the entire C-5 fleet was grounded. Just as we were pressing into AO Mobility Command's largest exercise, Mobility Garden, that had a completely different format. At the same time, we were supporting FEMA right here on our grid yard at the aerial port with over 120 ambulance and additional FEMA support resources who were supporting the fires taking place in Santa Rosa that were devastating it. I thought at that time, I was like, wow, what a mess. What a first month in command. What a mess. Never would have, I have imagined that I'd be bookending this command by fighting through a pandemic over the past six months. That said, what a time to lead and what a time to serve. There's no other team I would rather have by my side in this fight or that fight than the men and women of the 60th Olympic Street and Team Travis. Colonel Nelson, Courtney, Chief, Tia, you guys came in during turbulent times yourselves. And throughout that entire time, I've seen you lead with class and strength of character. You were exactly what this woman needed at that time. Vic's not here, I know he's passing out, uh, or packing out household goods, but to the bald brotherhood that he is, he has an unenviable position in the MSB because that's where we bring all our broken toys that we need fixed. Tom has never worked as fast as we want, construction's never taken place as fast as we want, and the gates never opened for me early enough to get to work. So he's been the Lord of the Roads of uh, my frustrations in those areas, but he has continued to serve this base in this wing and make incremental changes uh, 
to keep this space up and running and to continue to improve the infrastructure. So thank you. Kristen Fields, you are the first female commander at David Grant Medical Center. It's sort of sad in 2020 that we're still doing first, but make no, no mistake, Kristen, I know you couldn't be here today because you're with family. In what you earned that position, not because you're the first thing to do. You definitely earned that position and you're completely deserving of that position. We're blessed to have another first in our ranks. First one, first black female commander of David Grant Medical Center, Colonel Gwendolyn Foster. Make no mistake, man, you have earned this, not because of a first or anything, because of your proven performance. So congratulations. You manage from baby docs and baby medics to groundbreaking medicine that comes on the heels of lessons learned at Joint at Craig Joint Theater Hospital. And you bring that knowledge and experience back to you treat not only our own and Sun Travis Air Force Base, but the hundreds of thousands of veterans. I'm gonna be one of those veterans here soon, so please keep that great coming. I appreciate that. Hopefully I'll learn from your services there. Greg, the OG, our working relationship has been amazing, and I would, I would bet your paycheck that <laughs> it is the envy of other wings around our mobility command. Working with you has been amazing. My only regret is that we did not have more time to work together with this amazing wing and this amazing mission that we have. But I am happy knowing that you're going to be able to work with Jay. I know you guys are going to make an amazing team and are, continue to, are going to continue to lead AUC from the West Coast. To our dream team of squadron commanders, chiefs, and officers, I've got to, I've got to um, touch a little bit on the dream team. I see the sworn senior back there with the man of leisure, Rob Corsi, recently retired, and his wife Kelly. Justin, him, he, Josh, Reno, and they hired who's off the desert. This was our dream team. This has been years in the making. It's been an honor serving with all of you. And to our new dream team members, hold up to the varsity crew, Major May, Major Bowens, and Major Wharton on your second tour, second command tour. You guys are amazing leaders, and I'm, I'm delighted to see where you go from here. You've got an incredible pathways in place for you, but your track record of performances hit the stars. Ladies and gentlemen of the maintenance group, Ariel Ford, training, plans and scheduling, analysis, QA, thank you. Thank you to you and your families for shouldering the awesome responsibility of serving our nation and all that goes with it. You are all in the profession of arms, one of the most respected professions in the world. Together we have the honor of preserving the freedoms for our families and our great nation. We started out three years ago with three simple visions. Safe, effective, and efficient aerial port and aircraft maintenance operations, and in that order. And I'd say we did a pretty good job. Out of 48 aircraft performance metrics across three different weapon systems, we led Air Mobility Command in 33 of the 48. Not once, not twice, but for 36 months straight, for three years, we led those performance metrics because of your efforts. This allowed us to serve as the key West Coast hub and the go-to wing for cargo and passenger movement, in addition to shouldering a five-fold increase in munitions moved around the world for DOD. In addition to that, we moved unique items like NASA, space equipment, Navy ship shafts, sonar systems, deep sea rescue equipment, and maintained an alert posture for the CRG and our medics that needed to be called up to respond to humanitarian crisis at a moment's notice. Few of these things were honored with the medal that you heard that each and every one of you were. I'm just fortunate to get it presented to me up here. Back to back to Delhi and towards in the best maintenance group in Air Mobility Command, Air Force level and AMC level maintenance effectiveness awards, and the large terminal board of the year for the United States Air Force. We've accomplished this through aggressive taking flights to the jet approach. You can't wait for the jet to go. If you do, you're behind. You've got to stay ahead of it in planning, recovering, servicing, unloading, and loading, all before we can generate that aircraft. Along the way, we've leveraged new tools and technologies to increase the speed of our information, the speed of our information cycle. 
with the goal of augmenting and accelerating our decision speed in our port and on our aircraft. We've adopted laser paint removers, 3D printers, AR, VR technologies, drones, reliable Wi-Fi coverage, that three years ago, these were still ideas and goals. Today, they are real tools. They're being tested and put to use because of you. There's a quote from Jimmy Doolittle that I love to reference. It reads very simply, if we should have to fight, we should be prepared to do battle from the neck up instead of from the neck down. That's exactly what we've done in partnership with organizations like Spark and Afterworks and the, the Rapid Sustainable Organization. Again, paving the way for AMC and leading the way for our Air Force, re-energizing the innovative roots of our service. As I pass the reins of responsibility for the men and women and the mission of the 60th MXD to Jay Reeves, I will leave with another quote from Teddy Roosevelt. Dare to be great. For this is a life of action, of strenuous performance of duty. Let us live by striving mightily and run the risk of wearing out than rusting out. Our profession is not easy, but the work is so important to our nation. And in order for our work to be accomplished, we must continue to move forward. That's how our airplanes become effective, is only when they're moving forward, down the runway and into the air. Thank you to all of you, because despite all of the challenges and all the recent pandemic, it's the actions of the men and women and civilians and reserves of this team and this community that has kept our Air Force moving forward. I will close again, once again, by simply saying thank you. Thank you for serving our nation. I believe that any man or woman who will be asked what they do to make their life worthwhile may respond with a great deal of pride. I serve our nation as an airman in the United States Air Force at Travis Air Force Base. You are all amazing. Thank you. It's been an honor serving with you and as your commander. Thank you, Colonel Hammersmith. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the change of command ceremony. Attention to orders. Special order G-20-029, dated 2 July 2020. Colonel James Reeves is appointed commander, 60th Maintenance Group, Travis Air Force Base, California, effective 9 July 2020, under authority of Air Force Instruction 51-604. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. On behalf of Colonel Nelson, it is my pleasure to introduce the commander, 60th Maintenance Group, Colonel Reeves. Thank you for your partnership and support in your attendance. 
is here today. Thank you. I'd also like to thank uh, my fellow group commanders, all of our squadron commanders, our chiefs, first sergeants for attending this this morning and demonstrating your support to the 60th Infantry Chief as well. Finally, I'd like to give special recognition to my family, my wife Kath, and, uh, and our kids, Maggie, Owen, and Grant, your unwavering patience and affection steadfast support as we take on all the challenges and most importantly the opportunities of life make everything worthwhile and worthwhile and actually the best. Love you guys. Now taking command is something that every young armed officer regardless of career or field strives for as they make their way through their Air Force career. That said, for a maintenance officer, the rare opportunity to take command of an actual maintenance group, especially one of this notoriety, Distinction is a significant opportunity and one that's not lost. With that in mind, I'd like to thank Colonel Nelson for entrusting me with this task. I'm most deeply humbled by this opportunity and fully aware of the responsibility and the true level of service that is required of the position. Thank you, sir. I'd also like to take this opportunity to recognize the Hammer Chiefs. Hammer, Dave, sorry, Hammer, Kim, Austin. Thank you for such a great welcome to this group. Your dedication and passion for the men and women of the 60th MX2 is without question. For those that may not know, uh, and I think most probably do, Dave is a bit of a legend in the AMC community. While the two of us have never actually been stationed together, it's not hard to know his name because of the reputation of success that seems to follow him around as he makes his stops for his career. The Air Force and AMC are truly going to miss you presence, and you're definitely leaving a legacy of excellence here at Travis. Thanks, Dave. I wish you, Kim, Austin, all the best as we make this exciting transition, and I'm sure that same level of success will continue to follow you, all of you well into the future. Finally, to the men and women of the 60th Maintenance Group, thank you for putting together such an amazing song for this week. Having been in the AMC, most of my career of watching the true admiration of all that this exemplary group has been able to accomplish over the years. From wartime tasks like operations like the Iraqi Freedom, Enduring Freedom, and Inherent Resolve, to humanitarian missions like Operations Tomodachi, Unified Assistance, and the more recent COVID-19 support missions. This wing, and in particular this group, has never faltered. In fact, this group has done has not only accomplished all those tasks at hand, but has done so with excellence, pride, and professionalism. This group truly exemplifies our command vision of being total air mobility warriors. With that in mind, I'm truly honored to serve as your commander. Not only do I look forward to continuing the proud tradition of excellence and professionalism that this group has established, but more importantly, and more importantly, I look forward to serving you. Commander, as we strive to achieve even greater heights in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Reeves. We look forward to your leadership and guidance. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of the Air Force song and the departure of the official party. <laughs> 